students. Today we're going to get you to think deeply. We're going to be philosophers today, we're going to be scientists, and we're going to be historians. The first person I'd like you to meet is René Descartes. René? Bonjour. Je m'appelle René Descartes. Hello, my name is René Descartes, and I have a question for you. How do you know that you exist? Can you prove it? Do you doubt it? I've had some people say that other people talking to you is proof that you exist, but what happens when you're alone? Do you not exist if no one's talking to you? I've had some people say they can tell that they exist because of their senses. If they see something or feel something or smell something or touch something, that experience, those sensations are evidence of their existence. But our senses can fool us sometimes. Have your eyes ever been tricked? But that thought, that doubt, that question, that is an experience. If you're thinking that you might not exist, that is something that's going on inside of you. That in itself is evidence of an existence because that thought, that question, that doubt wouldn't even be there if you didn't exist. You exist and your thoughts are evidence of that. Whether or not we exist is perhaps the most important question, the most famous question in all the history of philosophy. Start with nothing, doubt everything. Build up to a conclusion using the data that you collect. I think, therefore I am. So that was a good example of inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is the method of coming to a conclusion based on your observations, your experiments, and the evidence that they provide. Think of it like this. A duct is a passageway. It is a passageway to carry something from one place to another. You have an aqueduct to carry water. You have an air duct to carry air. You have tear ducts to carry tears. This duct is a passageway to lead you to your conclusion. Imagine that inductive reasoning is putting things into that duct. You're putting your observations in. You're putting your experiments in. You're putting all of the data that you acquired looking at these things, using your senses. All those things are going in and they are carrying you to your conclusion. You observe, you experiment, you record data. That becomes evidence that leads you to your conclusion. Start with nothing. Doubt everything. Build to a conclusion with the data you collect. It seems reasonable, right? Reason, logic, or maybe you think it's ridiculous. Why strip away all these years of learning that we have? We don't have to start with nothing. Why would we do that? Are we just wasting our time? When Descartes promoted this way of thought, this way of inductive reasoning, that was not the way that most people were coming to their conclusions. They were using a different way called deductive reasoning. For 2,000 years, people had been following the example of the deductive reasoning that philosophers like Plato and Socrates were using to come to their conclusions. The inductive reasoning that Descartes proposed brought a new change in perspective. Now I'll introduce you to a Greek philosopher, Plato. My name is Plato. I use deductive reason. My most powerful tool is my brain. I'm not going to do any experiments. I'm not going to do any observations and writing down notes. No, when you have such a powerful tool as the brain, the most important thing you can do is just think about things that you know. Man has already learned so much. It would be foolish of me to make more work for myself. I still have a duct leading to my conclusion, but how do I get there? I start with whatever I know, or at least I think I know. I'm not going to doubt whether or not I exist. That's ridiculous. I obviously already know that. One example I was talking to my friends about was how do we define what is a human? We say, okay, I know a human is something that walks on two legs, right? That is a fact, that is true. I know that a human is something that does not fly. That also is true. I know a human is something that doesn't have feathers. I think we've defined a human, agree? A human is something that has no feathers, it cannot fly, and it walks on two legs. And we don't have to have just two or three claims to support our definition of a human. We can go beyond that. We can have more description, but they're all things that we're coming up with in our head, things that we think we already know. We can sit around and brainstorm all day about things that we know make a human human. The key difference between the deductive reasoning that I like to use and the 
inductive reasoning that Descartes likes to use is that I'm not going to do any experiments. I'm not going to do any observations. I'm going to use the most powerful tool, my brain. Of course, Descartes is going to point out that there are problems with the deductive method of reasoning. What if one of our claims is incorrect? What if we thought we knew something, but we didn't actually know it? How will we ever discover a truth if it sits on a foundation of misunderstanding? For me and the early Greeks, deductive reasoning is good enough. We'll leave it for Descartes and the scientific revolution to work out all of those problems later. When we start talking about the scientific revolution, people want to think about a wave of new discoveries. And there were, there were new discoveries. But that's not the core of what the scientific revolution was all about. This was a time of realizing that the Earth was not the center of the universe. It was a time of realizing how gravity pulled things together. It was a time of learning how life behaved and how bodies function. Those are great, but really, the revolution was not on any one discovery or even a wave of discoveries. The revolution was a revolution in how we came to those discoveries. The revolution was a shift from deductive reasoning to inductive reasoning. The revolution was a shift from relying on experts of the past to giving the power of discovery to the individual. The individual. Imagine living at this time and being empowered by this new method. All your life, the most well-educated people were the people that had studied the writings of the ancient Greeks and Romans. It wasn't people that were making these discoveries for themselves. But now, if you want to become a well-educated person, you are going to use your data, your observations, your experiments to learn these things. You're going to observe, experiment, and come to your own conclusion. Some of that old wisdom you're going to find is still true. But now you are confident in that based on your evidence. Some of that old wisdom you're going to find out is actually wrong and it's going to take some time and evidence to convince people that we need to change our ideas. Having modern data is going to be the most important tool in that effort. This shift to the power of the individual in making changes is going to have a big impact on the future of religion and of government. This change from the perspective of tradition to the here and now made people reevaluate what they thought that they knew. They began to get creative with their own interpretations. Why do we worship God the way we do? That's how we've always done it. What if we do it differently? What if each individual made a choice in how they wanted to worship? What if each individual made their own decisions, their own interpretation of what the Bible actually means? Why do we have a king that rules us the way he does? That's how we've always done it. What if we do it differently? What if each individual made a choice about how they wanted to be governed? What if each individual made a choice about what was the best way for a ruler to rule? What comes next is a wave in change of both religion and government. What started out as a change in methods of discovering what's true about the natural world with science and philosophy suddenly expands to religion and government. The focus shifted from the power of tradition, of what we had always done, to the power of now, the power of the individual, of the power of first direct action and interpreting things for yourself. It shifted from relying on the wisdom of the past to voicing your own opinion, making your own opinion, making it for yourself as an individual now. This was the scientific revolution and this is the impact it had moving forward.